Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and in this session we are going to learn about the concept of realism. So what is real and what is not? The idea behind the concept of realism coming from the ancient till the modern themes in geography. So this is what we are going to study in today's session. But before we go ahead, please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So let's learn about this word called realism. So what is this ism all about? This is about this word coming from Old French or Latin, which basically means actual. So real or realis is the main word from which it has been taken into English. And further, if we see medieval Latin, it is elaborated as belonging to thing itself. Basically belonging to what? To properties, goods, matter, thing. So this is the basic idea behind this word realism. The meaning of genuine, when we say something is real, it is genuine, it was first recorded in 16th century and as a sense of unaffected, that is no nonsense. So when we say something is real, it basically means it is in actual sense what we actually see or observe or feel. So that is what is real to us. It is not fabricated, it is no nonsense. So this is what the definition of basic word real is. So when we also talk about real estate, so whenever it is considered as part of the property dealing, whenever you must have gone and seen, it's written real estate. So this word real estate is coming from this connotation itself of belonging to a property or good or matter or thing. So it is an immovable property and it is distinguished from a personal property. So real estate and personal property is a different thing. So that is where this word comes from. But what is this concept of realistic philosophy all about? This is basically a viewpoint that reality exists independent of the mind. So basically reality is not dependent upon our minds. So remember in the earlier concept of idealism, it was that reality is what is the function of mind. But it is exactly opposite of what the reality talking about. So it is not the function of mind. Let's elaborate it further. So historically looking at this, the realism by Platonic and Socratic thought, as we have studied in the earlier part of the geographical thought lectures. So it was used in opposition to the nominalism just for the namesake. So this doctrine, this idea that universal and abstract entities have real objective existence. So this was the basic idea in the Platonic and Socratic world from ancient Greece. So at present what it is, as I said earlier, it is basically considered as an opposition to the idealistic concept coming from the idea superiority. So it talks about not the superiority of mind rather than reality is what exactly it is, what exactly how we see it. So let's understand it furthermore in theory of the Plato. So he asserted that the forms that we see anything suppose if you have a mobile phone, if you have a television, if you have a table, anything that we see touch taste and smell. So all these are the senses from which we observe the material world around us. So in time and space do not exist. According to Plato, it does not exist and are not knowable with our senses. So it was talking about that our senses is incapable to see the reality because reality is something beyond that we see. So that was the assertion of Plato. Then a particular phenomena is only appearance. So it is just the surface which shall disappear in due course of time. So this was the beginnings of what we talk about the idea of reality and beyond reality. So what is actual? What is real? So this was the basic premise on which this idea of realism was started in the Greek or Roman time. So for example, a specific mountain like the Himalaya does not exist. Why? It will be worn down due to the several processes to the ocean floor over geological time. So as we study in the physical geography, we see that there is a surface erosion happening and gradually it will go to the base level. So what happens? What exists now? Is it real? So how can we say that it is real? Because over time it will not be there. So contrary to this, the general and universal term mountain is still rigid and fixed. So this was the idea that was given in the earlier phase. 
So just opposite to the nominalists, notably the Aristotelians, denied the existence of an ideal mountain. So there was no ideal mountain. So it was opposing the idea of idealism. That's why. So Plato's idea was more about beyond what we see. So that was about the mind aspect. But Aristotle's idea was not about that ideal concept because nothing was ideal according to the nominalists. So this was the debate between Plato and Aristotle of that particular time of scholars. So what is real is a particular mountain that we can all see and touch. So for the nominalists, for people who believe in nominal scales, nominal scales is by the character, by the name. So mountain is as we see it. If we don't see it, it means it is not there. So this is what realism was being talked in the earlier phase. Now further, if we look at the medieval times, the Platonic Socratic thought that came to be known as the scholastic realism. So remember this phrase scholastic realism because it was coming from Greco-Roman scholarship. So the main proponent of scholastic realism in medieval times was John Scott. So in his essay, on the division of nature. Remember the name of the essay by John Scott on the division of nature. He reasoned that the divisions of the physical world all signify something hidden. Remember in the physical world there is always there something which is hidden which is not seen. So in themselves they are not real. So this was being talked by John Scott. So the cyclic process of the physical world that is seasonal and astrological cycles for instance all proved for the Scott that the existence of a divine order is there, a harmony and a law is there. So they proved that in the ordinary sense, world is not real. So what we see in ordinary sense through our basic senses is not real. So why? Because it was again coming from the scholastic traditions of the idea of realism. So what is real and what is not real. So in 19th century what we see, realism took the shape of direct or naive realism. Now this word direct or naive, which is narrower or it is supposed to be just innocent in nature, which is very natural that is coming to us, that is what is naive realism. So which was polemic against this idealistic concept coming from the scholastic realism background. So Cook Wilson was one of the scholars or the founder of this naive realism in 19th century. So remember we have got two kinds of realism already here. So one is scholastic realism and one is naive realism. So he and his students, his pupils denied the existence of any problematic or abstract entity. So the world beyond existence, the world beyond our senses, that was the basic idea, idealism, the scholastic realism concept was now denied by these scholars. So what it was? A denial which of course runs counter to the Plato's argument of what is real. So the idea of scholastic realism now was countered by this idea of direct observation, direct realism, which is also called naive realism. So for direct realist, nothing existed that was not observable means everything that was existing was observable in time and space. So beyond observation is nothing that exists. So for a direct realist, for a naive realist, everything can be observed through the senses directly. So they developed a logic of perceiving the world through common sense logic. So as we say, don't you have common sense? It basically is coming from which realism part? Remember, it is coming from naive realism, the latest one. So which argued that our views of the world are constructed in the mind by an interaction through society with physical world. So remember, whatever we view in our mind, whatever we observe is the function of what we actually do in interaction with our surroundings, with our society, with our physical world. So it's nothing beyond that logic. So that is the common sense. So this direct naive realism had a sustaining influence on geography as we see, especially on commercial and military geography during Victorian time period. So for the naive or common sense geographers, the mind grasps the world. Okay, so mind is able to grasp, observe the world in simple effortless process, something to do all the time. So all the time our mind keeps observing and getting things. That is what a reality is perceived by the mind. So geographical facts of observed phenomena and changes within them can be objectively established. So what we see is that this realism says that 
we can establish the ideas of existence of all those things around us through objective reality and any question of unseen entities that we say as abstract forms is irrelevant. So it completely negated that idea of abstract existence beyond things. So with due precautions, the simple common sense that was emphasized on, we can know the reality of a place, of a topography, of soil fields, water tastes, everything that we study in the physical environment, which is observable, which is measurable, which is tangible. So that was emphasized in this particular idea of the naive realism that is common sense geography. So further what we see is the objectives of this naive realism are common to those social reform to or national surveys. So remember stamp, Doodley stamp with his objective of conducting land use survey of Britain and suggested significant changes in land utilization was coming from this idea that it could be mapped in an absolute way. So land use survey was based on this kind of realism as in the works of Doodley Stamp we see. So it gave more job opportunities, created greater respectability to the geographers. So this was widely accepted in 19th and 20th century. So the 60s can be called as the period of extreme of naive realism. So what it led to, we have already studied, the quantification, the quantitative revolution in geography. So this is coming from the ideas of realism only, that which is mappable, which is tangible, which is objective, which is generalizable. We can do that. We can make laws. So nomothetic geography promotion, positivistic geography, that is where realism comes in, in terms of the common sense geography, in terms of naive realism. So this revolution was based mainly on the philosophical idea of positivism that we studied and realism had taken the shape of new critical realism. So now it was not even called naive realism but rather it was critical realism in the last decade and father of this critical realism that we say is T.P. Nunn. So remember T.P. Nunn, he was the scholar who propounded this idea of critical realism, about critical thinking. So that was important. So the proponents of this philosophy asserted that nothing exists, excepting that which is experienced. So experience, empiricism, observation, direct observation, these were the handy tools for geographers to perform this idea based on realism of mapping of the given space. So now, when we have studied about the concept of realism and the scholarship in geography that promoted this concept of realism, now in the lectures to come, we will be learning more on the ideas of welfare geography, feminism and postmodernism. So stay tuned and all my best wishes to you.